as you can see the, the plaster's off, the burn's healed, uh, wrist feels good actually. There was no major damage in there so I've been, been very lucky with that. Anyway, you've probably seen this use this old 3 jaw chuck before uh, when I've been welding round parts. What I'm going to do is mount a 3 jaw chuck onto the electric rotating welding fixture I've been busy building. I found a old chuck back plate here and I was just going to board it out and press a bush in and weld a bit of bar in but I think what I might do is measure this thread in machine a spigot and a thread to screw into there machine that to fit the chuck then it means once this is mounted into the motor I can screw a face plate on as well because I want to build a big face plate for it as well I've got no idea what this is off but it's, I've had it for years it come with a new chuck I measured it's bound to be imperial it is inch and a half and I would imagine the thread will be 6 TPI it is 6 TPI I think that's how I can see that there it's a 6 TPI thread gauge it fits in there perfectly So I've got some inch and a half round bar that will go into there. We need to cut that thread on the end of there. I can cut the imperial thread on my Harrison metric layer. That did make some change wheels till I was to do that. I mean, there's several ways of doing this, but I like straw cutting. It'll make a nice little video. Um, I'll set this up in the layer and get the thread cut. I've put some inch and a half bright bar into the 774 jaw chuck. It's important that this is running true because I won't be taking anything off the outside diameter. That's the right size now to fit the adapter. Uh, had the chuck been going to go onto a lathe, I would have had to put a bigger, a bigger piece of bar in in machine register spot on. But for a welding rotator, it'll be perfectly acceptable. I'll put a clock here, John, just see how true this is actually running. I've been quite impressed with this little four jaw chuck. I didn't pay a great lot of money for it. I bought it brand new. Um, I use it quite a lot. Anything accurate, I need to use a four jaw independent chuck or collets. And it was zero of that. And that's running within a thousandth of an inch, so that's, that's near enough. Cutting imperial threads. On this 140 metric Harrison Lear, there's a bit of a black art. As a friend of mine did a chart for us showing what I need to do, where to put the levers. This is a, a three lever gearbox which helps. But I can definitely cut 6 TPI, that's it there. And these are the change wheels I need to use a 50, a 120, 80, and a 63. That's 63 tooth, that's the one I made to allow us to cut the imperial threads. Quite often you use a 127 as a transition gear. You can't get a 127 gear in the case on the back of the lathe. It's not big enough. So we worked out that a 63 tooth makes so little difference on the threads that we're cutting. And the use of putting them to it makes no difference at all. Had I been making, as I often say, an end cap for a nuclear reactor, I think I might have tried to get a 127 gear in. But to mount a chuck on a world rotator, I'm sure the thread will be more than accurate. Right, so 6 TPI, right hand lever, the two other levers. I'll put the change wheels in, I'll show that. I've showed it before, but I'll show it again. I think it's quite interesting. As I've said, I could just weld a bit of bar into the adapter and machine it down. But I think cutting the thread will make for a, a more interesting video, and also it'll make the spindle more use because I can screw face plates on. I think this could be a box fad. Uh, spindle diameter. If it is, I've also got a spare collar chuck that I had that wasn't very accurate, but it'll do ideally for holding small items to be welded. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do machine that thread. These are the change wheels in the back of the Harrison 140 lathe. The top one that's the actual lathe spindle, the main shaft that's hollow. Down below there, that's what they call a tumbler gear, tumbler reverse gear. If you put that in one way, it goes in one direction, 
other way, it's the opposite direction, so it reverses the rotation of this gear train. This is a, a simple gear train that's on here. We've got a, a top driver gear, we've got an intermediate gear, and we've got a driven gear. That's fastened onto the gearbox of the lathe. That's an idler, and that is the one down below the tumbler reverse, which is geared one to one to the main shaft. All the tumbler does is change the direction. To cut the imperial thread, we need to put a compound gear train in. So the first thing I want to do is remove these gears. So that gear there is basically just a spare so that's all it's being used for. Right, we've got the three nuts. The gears are all key onto the shafts. You try and keep the keys to the top so that the, the bastard things don't fall off. Right, according to the chart, the top here needs to be a 50, which is that one. The 50 drives an 80, which is that one. Which is also connected to the 63. That's the 63 that I made. That's the gear that gives you the, the ratio of those two there, the ratio of that's what converts metric to imperial. Right, on the bottom here we need a 120. But we need a spacer in there first. Then the 120. Which is this big one here. Basically, that one drives onto there, and that one drives onto there. I'm just going to put a little nip on these just to hold them in place. I'm sure I've got a spanner that fits there. Bastard, it just was a hit. That's better. So now you can see how things work. We've got a 50, driving an 80, connected to a 63, running on 0120, and that gives you the conversion factor to go from the metric lead screw to an imperial thread. We'll take the nuts back on and then set the clearance up on the gears. You do need backlash on these, if you have them too tight, you get a horrible gear scream out of them. Some people run a piece of paper between the gears, but... They're noisy anyway, straight cut gears are always noisy. See that back backlash between... All the gears, this gear here has got backlash. It doesn't matter because it's only going to be going in one direction when it's cutting the threads. There's an eye point on there, that's very important. I know it's that Ayla. I just use ordinary car engine oil basically on the gears. 
heavy grade car engine on it, like a 2050. Nothing, nothing fantastic. Isn't that an absolutely gorgeous colour? I need to face the end of the bar and then put a little recess in here with a screw cutting tool to drop into and then we're just about ready to start cutting the thread. Right, I've got a 55 degree nail tool, it's actually a short mill cutter. It's in a special type of holder, the spring holder. I've got my fish tail on and I've got it set up so it's perfectly at 90 degrees to the job. And it's absolutely dead on centre height. I've got the compound angle set, set 27 degrees because it's a 55 degree thread. So now we're getting very near ready to take it a real light cut just to mark just to take the blow off so I can measure it and make sure it is cutting the right 60 TPI thread. Right we're all set and ready to make our first pass just to just put a mark on so I can check the thread. Right that's the lead screw engaged and it won't be taken back on again until the job's finished. say that right I'm going to start again uh, the pitch on that thread was actually wrong I mixed up changes on the back I don't know what pitch I'd put but it certainly wasn't 6 TPI I've reset everything changed the change wheels around I've got the tool set up so we'll start all over again Not the end of the world, at least I realised before I spent too much time on it, and it's not exactly the. That's still 165 RPM there. Right, lead screws engaged. Right, that looks like 6 TPI. which it is, I'm not quite sure what I was looking at before.
to get somewhere near now. Be starting just. It takes very little from a thread not going on to a thread being pissed off with slack. I want a decent, a decent fit and thread on this. on the same setting just to take any spring out of the tool. Basically, that's the dog's bollocks or the monkey's nuts, I really want to call it. Here's the last. I need to put a collar on here for that to lock up against. But that is a nice, a nice fitting thread. Really happy with that. Once again, it's just to say a massive thanks for all the well wishes that have come in uh, towards me wife, me dad, <laughs> and me with the arms. Thanks for clicking the like button. Thanks for subscribing. The subscribe bit's quite important. If you watch my channel regularly, make sure you do subscribe. Uh, the more subscribed I get, basically, the more privileges I get from YouTube, and uh, I can put longer videos up and I can do more with it. Anyway, thanks for watching.